Good evening, my name is Aaron James and I am going to talk about the African American mathematician Dudley William Woodard. Um, he was born in Galveston, Texas on October, October 3rd, 1881 and he was the second person of African American descent to get his PhD in mathematics from the University of Pennsylvania. Um, being that the first was Albert Frank Cox and that was also his mentor. Um, a little bit of information about him, uh, he was an only child. Um, his dad worked as a post office mailman. Uh, his, I wouldn't say he's, his family was very luxurious and had a lot of money, but he, they pretty much supported him. He was always a smart, respectable kid, well-mannered. Um, he didn't really cause problems for too many people um, as he was growing up. Uh, he was an only child. He didn't have any siblings or anything like that. He um, lived only with his dad. Uh, his mother and father were not together. Um, he was, as he was growing up, you know, he was always fond of mathematics and things as such. Uh, he never really, never really gave anyone problems. Like I said before, uh, he has huge huge contributions to math. Um, he established the graduate mathematics program at Howard University in Washington, D.C. And he also had his son was also part of the faculty during that time. And he also won numerous awards and also got his PhD from the University of Pennsylvania as well. Um, Woodard earned his bachelor's of science and master's in 1906 and 1907 at the University of Chicago. Um, from 1907 to 1914, he worked as being a professor at the Tuskegee Institute, a um, very prestigious school in Alabama, and then moved to Wilberforce uh, University to help on their mathematics board as well before later moving on to Howard University in 1921. Uh, during his span, he received his Ph.D. in mathematics from the University of Pennsylvania, and that was in 1928. And his doctoral thesis was the two-dimensional analysis science with special reference to the Jordan Curve Theorem, which was advised by John R. Klein. Now, what basically that means is pretty much he had a research on a theorem that was not really proven by too many people, but the fact that the theorem could also help in many mathematics, not just math per se, but in the real world as well. Um, he also published more papers as well in his lifetime. Um, the other ones were Loki connected with the problem of two bodies, something dealing with a little bit of DNA, and the characterization of the closed end cell in Fundamental Mathematica which once again, blending in math with science. Um, in 1929, the closed in cell paper that he wrote was actually accredited to be the first journal published by an African-American. And that was in 1929. Uh, Scott Williams, uh, a professor at the mathematics department at the University of Buffalo uh, stated this, actually said this out of his own mouth, that this was the first publication by an African American. Um, at Howard University, he was a real respected man that worked his way up the ranks from being a professor um, and a mentor for different students on campus. Uh, he pretty much paved the way for the mathematics department at Howard University by establishing the graduate program there. Um, his best known student was William Waldron Shefflin Clater. Uh, he earned numerous awards, numerous scholarships in mathematics during his undergraduate and graduate studies. And when he was at Penn, he took the one of the most prestigious awards uh, at Penn University itself, um, which is the Harrison fellowship which is pretty much uh pretty much a success he pretty much named his success to his mentor which was dudley weldon water and clara later took his phd at the university of pennsylvania which pretty much shows that 
Woodard was a pretty much successful man. He wasn't just a well-mannered guy that was just all about his books. He was great in the classroom and out the classroom as well. And he also was a great mentor as well. And when his when the student Clater was going to get his PhD, it was the same man, John R. Klein, that advised his thesis just as as he did with uh, Dudley Woodard. Um, he ended up retiring in 1947 as a chairperson of the Howard University Department uh, of Mathematics. He later died on July 1st, 1965. Uh, in his home in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, pretty much going through his his research, he pretty much paved the way for HBCUs um, by by sending a lot of people in in the mathematics department, um, involving himself with community uh, activities, community events, things of that nature, and just to say that during this time it was a lot of restrictions, being that it was racism. Uh, uh, you know, uh, racism during this time. It was the early, early 1900s. I mean, it was pretty bad. Uh, the fact that he he did all this um, coming from a small place in Texas, uh, had to travel and have so much success with his smarts it is pretty remarkable. Being that he had less resources and a lot more hardships than African Americans uh, as today. Um, he pretty much made it possible for a lot of African Americans, mathematicians, to come in that field and learn and be successful in life uh, for contributing to mathematics. Um, he was an excellent. He was an excellent administrator, and his colleagues always respected him. He was always remembered uh, at Howard University. There as. I've actually looked at the webpage at Howard University where they have um, a special section uh, contributed for him, per se, because he, he pretty much made a big contribution to Howard University and to, uh, to the mathematics science community. Uh, the math that he Personally, I actually ran out of space for that last video to getting cut off. Uh, his main contribution to mathematics uh, of what he did was helping um, developing methods and different mathematical uh, philosophies or things as such. Um, he made huge contributions to things such as learning the secrets of DNA, uh, statistics and probability. Um, helping people uh buying leasing new cars population growth i mean he pretty much had an impact um, in a lot of people's lives to help teach people uh certain certain subjects in mathematics today um he was always a respected man uh by his colleagues and it is a lot of people say he was well mannered always good with inside and outside of the classroom um it's not a lot of information uh, to say that what he actually did by creating uh, new mathematical skills himself, um, pretty much fortifying uh, mathematics today and pretty much getting it to uh, African Americans and different people, uh, different minorities that were underrepresented um, and such in that nature and giving them a chance to excel in their education as well. And being that he was a chairperson, uh, a lot of people supported him um, and Howard University at the mathematics department. And being that uh, Howard University was one of the more prestigious of the HBCUs, um, he made it possible that a lot of people will come and contribute their math skills and contribute their ideas to help uh, mentor other uh, master students and graduate students as well in the program. Um, I feel like Dudley Woodard would have been, he's, he's pretty much a, a stepping stone, uh, being that I go to HBCU myself as well. Um, he's a, pretty, a, a really big 
contributor to to HBCUs and African Americans that are interested in mathematics. Um, being that I'm a computer science major, mathematics is definitely a big part in computer science and developing a computer. So being him that he established that trend of putting a uh, a graduate program to have a deeper understanding of mathematics and a deeper understanding of of concepts and theorems and things as such uh, to help just not just African Americans for general but just to help people learn math and that math is very prominent in our life and if we don't have a full understanding of math we're not going to be that much successful in life I feel as such uh, he was an incredible man he had less resources than what we have today definitely to achieve that so he much. made more contributions in mathematics and you know, allowing more people to have a better understanding of mathematics in a deeper way. Uh, he faced many challenges in the fact that Mr. Woodard was a noble, well-mannered character who made him very successful um, in education and in the community as well uh, during this uh, hard racial period in America's history. Uh, I, I enjoyed having to research a remarkable man like this. I didn't even know anything about him until I researched uh, his name up. Um, but I, I really am glad that I got a chance to, to know someone that was a real contribution and not only uh, in African Americans in general in education, but uh, in my education as well because he paved the way for me. I feel as such to make it easier for African Americans to get uh, to get more understanding in mathematics at a at a HBCU uh, oriented college. So he was a remarkable man, and he should definitely be remembered and put on a high stepping stone. And his work and his legacy speaks for himself. So that's all I have for today. Thank you.